Today we're going to be showing you guys how to fit laminate. Like this one, let's go! So your first step guys is to remove any old floor coverings and clean the area and then remove your door to make it a lot easier to install the laminate. Right now that you've removed your doors and your floor covering, if you want to remove your skirtings, now is the time. If you're going to keep your old skirtings, the process is exactly the same, but you'll need some Scotia at the end and you'll see why. So let's move on with underlay. So what type of underlay you say? We're going to be using fiberboard because this is for timber floors and it actually helps take imperfections out the floor. If you have a concrete floor, you need to use one with a moisture barrier. Right, so when it comes to laying fiberboard, we like to stagger the joints. And what we usually do is we come off one of the longest walls, but we have to keep them straight, otherwise they'll get twisted as we lay. But we're gonna show you a pra impractical. When you open the pack, we've left the back section of plastic on. So when you lean it up against stuff, the green fiber don't rub off on your paint and things like that. So, little tip. So all we do is we take our boards and we lay them out as a brick edge pattern. And personally, I don't like to do the cuts yet. I will do them at the end. So we're just gonna lay the bulk of the floor out. So we're just gonna do this across the whole room. And anywhere you can't get a full plank in, we're just gonna leave it for now and we'll come back and we'll show you a way to do it very easily. Also when laying these, they're, slight, they're sometimes curled up one way. So if Phil shows you, as you can see, you don't lay it that way. <laughs> so if you lay it like that, it's very... So put that cup down. So look, so things like this, we've come to the wall, can't get a full one in, doesn't matter, we're just gonna move on, do another half bond on that, and go back the other way. Right, so let's show you one of the most common ones that you'll need to cut, and that is going around the corner like this. It's only underlay, we're not trying to make art here. So all we do is bump it up to the corner like so, grab ourselves a standing knife, and then we line it up square, and we just run our blade through the back like so. And we remove that piece underneath, and that's the first section of the corner done. Nice and tight. And then we're gonna get another board and rather than trying to measure this and do all that sort of business, we just go up to there. Because we're in a doorway, we're just gonna trim roughly this section out. It doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, it's underlay. So we can bump that up so we're in the doorway like so. And now you can see we're lapping over loads of boards here and it's no big deal. We're just gonna cut around the perimeter of this board here with our knife. It's nice and easy and it's nice and fast. And then we just take away the pieces from underneath and we slot this board in. Right, so we're moving down now and we've got some radiator pipes, another common feature. So we take a new board again, we slide up and we're not gonna be all fussy about it. All I do we're gonna pull our knife back like so. I'm gonna take the knife, touch it onto the wall, put my thumb about five mil back from the pipe. So I'm holding that, I've got five mil clearance from the pipe. Then we can bring our board back and that has given us a rough measurement. That's all you need to do. It doesn't need to be 100% perfect. Cut through that again. So then we take our little square out, keep this, slide that up, and just like with the corner we've just showed you, we're gonna cut the back here, pick your board up and take the piece out. So that one's now in. Now for us, our pipes are very tight to our skirting, so we don't actually need this, but some pipes are a bit further out. So you keep this, snap the pipe section off and you slide it back down the back so that there is no low point at the back of the rad so it'd go back in like that. Obviously we don't need as, but remember that if you do. Right, so on the normal runs where you haven't got pipes or corners, it's just a case of either taking a full board or any offcuts you got, 
So keep hold of all these because if it fits the gap, we're just going to use it. Remember to keep that fold down. We square it up like so. Cut neatly along the back with a sharp knife. Lift it up, take the waste out, keep this for another cut. Slide that in. And then all we've got left now is the long run that you'll have at the back. And all I'll do for speed is we take full boards. We're going to start with, with a full board. Now, if you're unlucky like we have, we've got a pipe here. We're going to cut that out now, the same method as that one, so that we're up to our wall like so. And then we're going to run this whole row in with full boards. Right, so now that Phil's laid them all out, now comes for the magical part. So you ain't sitting there measuring, marking, measuring, marking. This is, happens on the last row. So you've laid them over the top and you just run your blade the whole way along the room. And then you've got to go back and just lift that, any of the other boards and slot your fibre board into position. Right, now that you've got all your underlay down and it's complete, it's time to undercut any door frames that you might have. So we're going to use a multi-tool. You can use a handsaw, but it's a bit difficult. Take yourself a scrap of the flooring you're going to be using. We're going to turn it upside down and we're going to push it up to our frame. And then we're going to use our saw, so it's going to be getting loud. <laughs> So what I'm doing, I'm using this piece of wood as a guide on the height that I need to cut. And because it's a door frame and this is going to be a different floor covering, we only need to go to the centre of this here. So this gap, we're going to go in the centre of that. So don't go further, but make sure you go enough. And once you've cut 15 to 20 mil deep, that's enough, and we're going to take ourselves a screwdriver and a hammer, and I'll show you that in a second, and we're going to remove that timber there. We're just going to move our underlay back, just makes things a bit easier. And what I like to use is a flathead screwdriver. You can use a chisel, but after many years of doing this, this is the best way to do it, because chisels just chip and get blunted. And then all we're going to do is just slowly remove the section of frame that you've cut out. And if you're lucky, it'll just fall out. Don't try and smash it all out at once because it would be a nightmare. We're just going to chip it a little bit at a time. So now that you've knocked all your timber out from underneath using either a chisel or a flat-headed screwdriver and your hammer, we're going to get a hoover, we're going to clean all the dust back up, put our underlay back, and then we can move on to actually fitting your flooring. Right, the tools we're going to use for this job real quick a rubber mallet, a pry bar of some kind. This is an adjustable square or combination square. Pencil, a set of spacers for your flooring, a measuring tape and a jigsaw. You can do this with a handsaw, but I highly recommend getting yourself a jigsaw. It's gonna make your life a lot easier. And that is all you need to lay your floor. So let's get on with the first bit. So we are ready to finally lay some flooring. Couple of things you're gonna to have to decide. What way do you want it to run? We like to run ours the longest run in the room. So if it's longer one way, we want our planks to run that way. But if you want it to go the other way, you can. There's no real structure to it. It's just the look mainly. And another thing you need to check is that you don't end up with a tiny little cut on either side. So the easiest way for you guys at home to do this is to take yourself an off cut of your flooring Leave your 10 mil expansion on one, um, on one wall and start marking across your floor like so until you get to the other side. If the cut's too small, then adjust your starting plank. We've already measured ours, as is great. Right, so I've got my first plank in place and I've got myself some spacers. You can buy these as little kits for laminate fitting. Um, read your pack and it will tell you the expansion that is required for your flooring, because they're all slightly different, but they normally range between five and 10 millimeters, and they'll have all the specs for your particular flooring. 
We're running five millimeters for our flooring because we've checked the specs. And the last thing to note is that this larger clip is facing the direction I'm laying both ways. So I'm coming from left to right on this big clip and I'm coming from the back forward on this big clip here. It's much easier to click it in that way than try and go the other way. So you pick your flooring up at an angle, you slide it into the clip, you line the two edges up, take your time, because the first couple of rows are always the most difficult. Lay it flat, make sure you've got a nice join all the way through and it's not twisted off to one side. And then we'll move on to the next one. Right, so we've come to our very first cut and it's under our frame. So what we're gonna do is, if this was going like this, we're gonna turn it around. So now it's facing the wrong way. We're gonna line the end with where we want this laminate to finish. And remember I said in the middle of the frame. So we've lined it up there. We're gonna take our pencil and we're gonna mark where it joins here. So if you have a look, I've marked there. I want to finish it here and I've turned it 180 degrees. It's facing the wrong way. If you put yourself a little cross there, that's the piece we want. So then we take our combination square and we draw our line across. Right now we've got our mark. We're going to take our jigsaw and we're going to cut along that line. Now, if you're not comfortable with these, just take your time, there's no rush with the cuts. This is why people start veering off like this. So if you're using this, I'll show you that you don't even have to move forward. So there's no rush. Because you stay still. Now remember, really you wanna be cutting outside or get yourself some dust extraction, but we're filming so we need it as clear as possible. Right, we've got our piece. We come back to our door frame now. And all I do is I click it in the end like so. And I just mark 10 mil past the edge of the frame there. Because remember we're going under this because you undercut it. And we're gonna do exactly the same thing on the face. So we're gonna line it up square and we're gonna mark 10 millimeters inside of our frame. Use your square and square that up. And then we're gonna cut that little square. Something like that. And for this one here, because it's our first frame, we can just link it into there. Remembering the small clip going into the big clip. And we just slide it across like so. Underneath that frame, as far as we need to go with ours. And then we'll move on to the next row. Right, so this is the first three rows you're gonna be laying in, three or four rows. We're gonna be cutting three more bits that are around 12 inches different in size. So we'll have one this size, one this size, and one that size. The reason is because we need a random stagger. Once you get your first three rows cut down, so we're gonna cut these pieces now, the off cuts from the other end will then start going at the beginning, which we'll show you in a second, and that will give you a random staggered pattern, which is actually what's recommended. Now we've got our pieces cut, it's gonna be more clear to you. So that's a full plank, and then we'll come down to here, then here, then maybe up, however you want. I always like to make sure at least four rows are not close. So when that goes through, it's not near that one, and so on and so forth. Now we've got these, we'll stack these two out of the way, ready to go and we'll start with our next row remember these first two to three rows are the worst because there's no strength to the floor yet so we just lift it up and we can just work it in take your rubber mallet make sure that seam is completely sealed and then we move on to another full one right so this is one of the bits that people sometimes find a bit difficult and it's, it's quite simple once you figure it out. So we're gonna take this, put the end clip in first, we're tight-ish against the back, and we're gonna lay it down. So as you can see, we're in here and we're tight up to the clip there. 
as tight as we can get it. And then what I do, I put my foot as far back as I can reach, just a tiny bit of weight there, and I just lift in this end, like so. So I'm keeping that down, that stops that one from coming out. And you can just use your body weight to hold things down as you're moving around. And we're gonna take this, still holding the end of this row down, and we just tap that in. And we just give it a few taps to make sure it's fully seated. And it's as simple as that. Put our spacer back in. And then we're gonna repeat that process. The, f the more floor you lay, the easier it becomes. Just remember that. Right, so we're putting the cut of our second row in there. This is when we're gonna start keeping the off cuts. So we're gonna cut this using that method that we showed you, turning it backwards. But this off cut is gonna go back to the other end and that's gonna start another row. So let's cut that off now using a little tool that we haven't showed you yet. Right, this is called a laminate guillotine. They're not expensive anymore, they used to be, but we highly recommend you get one for all of your straight cuts. And we just line our mark up like so. Make sure the ball's straight. And you just cut through. It saves on a lot of dust and a lot of time. So, small clip is going on that end. The big clip is now gonna go back to our little pile. Right, so now we've got a little bit of flooring down. We don't need to be doing all this. So we've just put our plank in, we lifted it up, take our rubber mallet and lightly tap the side. And as soon as it drops down, just give it a little tap. And that's it now. So it's, as I said, it's much easier. We've got a frame coming up, but once we're past that, we're gonna start running in multiple rows at the same time. So let's get this frame in, and we'll show you that. And I'm gonna show you how to get through the meterage a lot quicker. Right, so we've come up to a door frame now. So all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lock my board in. I'm as close as I can get. And remember we mark that extra five to 10 millimeters so we're under. So this one here will be there. And over here will be there. And then we're gonna take it back up and sit it alongside in line with the previous one to where we wanna finish. And we're gonna mark five mil inside there and the same here. So we've got five mil there, 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 and there. And then we use our combination square to line up our marks. So that mark there. And then that second mark here. And we just extend that down like so. And we'll show you what that looks like next to the frame. And if you look at this frame, you see it's got that rounded architrave. So if you just roughly extend that round like so, it hasn't got to be perfect, it's just got to mimic it slightly. What you'll end up with is a pattern that will match what's already there. So it's just a case of getting it up next to it and transferring the marks over from the frame. So if we cut that out, it should slide in a treat. And now it's just a case of getting it as close as you can, locking it into place, and tapping it up and under. And the way I suggest you do that is to take yourself some scrap of the laminate. They do sell tapping blocks, but I'm not a fan of them. This is a much better method. And we're just gonna tap that board up until it's in position. And what you'll end up with is that nice crisp finish around the frames. And when you put your skirt in, or your Scotia, depending on what you've chose to do, it will look very, very professional and nice and clean. And now we're just gonna run this one in backwards because we had to start the frame. And then we'll start back at the other end and carry on laying out the meterage. So it's the same process when going in reverse. We're just gonna put the big clip underneath, sit this down into position. And then what I'll do is I'll lift the far end up, 
give it a light tap along the clip if you have to and then work our way along clipping it all into place and at the end you can give it that little finishing clumps so when you're doing it in reverse it's the same thing but we're actually just going to use this clip because this is normally around eight to ten millimeters as our spacing so we're going to bump that up to the wall make our mark and cut that off there and that will leave us our expansion right so now we've got past any little obstructions like that we can start rolling in multiple rows so all that is is we've got one of our cuts in then we've got a full ball here tap it into place like so And then we're going to go to another cut, get that one in, and then we'll do a full board again. And what we'll end up with is this sort of stepped pattern, and then we could just start adding in rows as we go. So we've got a pipe we've got to get round. So that's just a case of sliding this up like so. We're going to mark either side of our pipe like so. We then get a scrap and we're going to hook this in, get it into position against our wall so it's going to go there and using your combination square, we're going to mark the front here. So we go to the front and we scribe across. If you've got a large gap at the back, mark the front and the back and keep this piece and we'll put it back. Because we haven't, we don't need to do that. So what we've ended up is the two sides of our pipes and the front. And if you just round those off, that's plenty good because we're going to be putting covers over the top of the pipes. Right, so we're going to be cutting this out with a jigsaw. So we're going to set our jigsaw to zero on yours. And we're just going to slowly work our way through. And then when we come to our bend, stop trying to push forward and just slowly start to turn. No rush. If you're not comfortable with a jigsaw at this point, you can remove that and come in from the other side to make your life easier. Remember, we've come to the bend, we stop. And what you'll be left with is just a nice rounded off corner. Plenty good for the pipe work. So we'll slide that in. So now we've come up to a corner. Now these may look a bit intimidating, but they are actually very, very simple. We've put a piece of laminate on top of the row before. We've lined that edge up with our plank that we've got there. And all we need is our combination square and an off cut of laminate. So we put our square on the face of our laminate. We come about five to ten millimeters short of the wall so you see I've got a gap there and we mark across the front like that we then take our off cut and we sit it against that wall there where we're going against and we mark that there and what that gives you is the exact measurement minus ten millimeters because of that clip there so it'll be a perfect fit so if I cut that I'll show you Right, using exactly the same method as I've showed you already to install it, end clipping first, lay it flat, and then we're going to tip it up slightly, tap along your clips like so, and then we just give that last section a tap in, and then we get it in. 
you'll be left with the perfect expansion gap and the perfect cuts and it's nice and simple and then we'll show you this one here which is slightly different but the same principle right so on something like this we've got a little square we've got to cut in all we're going to do is like all the other end cuts we're going to turn this upside down take it up to our wall and the expansion you can measure this if you want but this is quicker and then we're going to mark it there and we're, we're going to cut that off that's our very first job and now we've got our piece cut down to length we're going to sit it in place line it up with the edge of our previous board and just like we did the corner we've got ourselves a scrap of laminate and we're just going to scribe along this wall like so so I'm all the way up to that wall mark 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 don't use a, a piece of laminate that's too big because if your wall's slightly out it won't take into consideration that movement in the wall whereas a smaller section something like that you can bend with the wall so we're just going to cut this off so if you follow those steps it should fit an absolute treat so we'll check this the length's all good we've just got to tip it up but when you start getting to these end sections you can't quite get your weight behind that is when you're going to need your prior bar this one is a bit heavy duty you might want to get yourself a diy one but either way they all work the same so with these i tip it up as high as i could possibly get it put my bar down the back and then i just twist to the side and it should just pop in like that be careful where you put that and then last of all we just take our mallet again just give it a light tap to make sure it's fully seated and it's all the way in and now we can get the bulk of the floor done right so we come to our last row and this is as simple as this we're going to put our pieces on take a scrap bump up to our wall and we just scribe along and that just gives us the cut that we need to put along our last wall and now that you're done remember to remove your spaces and i hope you enjoyed this video comment and subscribe Peace. Peace.